Maybe you just leave. Here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello show. <laughs> Mike, a pound of peanut brittle. Uh, brittle. You mean peanut brittle. No, peanut brutal. <laughs> He's got no teeth in his brutal. Oh, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of excitement in that store, Costello. What happened? Well, Andy Claus, he kept running up and down the stairs. You should have seen him. Up and down the stairs. Why? Well, he had to. His beard was caught in the escalator. <laughs> Did you buy anything besides the peanut brittle? Yes. My Uncle Mike is wearing a tuxedo Christmas Eve, so I bought him a new shirt. Stiff. Sure, he'll be hired in a kite. <laughs> Did you buy anything else? Well, I got a piece of mistletoe to hang on my nose. You're going to hang a piece of mistletoe on your nose? Oh, sure. This year I'm going to have a little fun on my own hook. <laughs> Did you buy a... Did you buy a present for your Aunt May? Yeah, I got her a case of soap chips. Why soap chips? Well, she lived in California all her life, and she's never had a white Christmas. I... <laughs> I'm thinking about that. Did you go to the policeman's ball last night? Yes, but I didn't have a very good time. Why not? None of the policemen would dance with me. <laughs> so I left and I went to the Burbank Theater. They got a beautiful girl basketball player that comes out on the stage and she immediately takes the basketball. Now, wait, 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 wait a minute, Costello. That's not a girl basketball player. You saw a bubble dancer. I thought it was funny she never dropped that ball. I... <laughs> Be quiet, Costello. Now, that's enough from you. Give my friend here a chance at the microphone. PDQ gasoline is so full of power, mileage, and the spirit of Christmas that PDQ dealers have a pretty swell gift to make your Christmas more fun than a clam bake. Three Christmas stickers, you know, to dial up those pretty packages you wrap. Beautifully, colorfully printed, some of them just dripping sentiment, others quick as an offhand gag. Yes, you'll find these handy decorations for Christmas packaging will add infinitely to the zesty spirit of Christmas giving. For you'll have one or more appropriate decorative Christmas stickers to put on gifts for everybody, from baby to granddad. Nothing to buy, of course. You just drive in to any PDQ service station and ask for your free Christmas sticker. If you don't own a car, borrow one. But drive in soon and ask for your free set of Christmas stickers. Get yours before they're gone. Get them PDQ. Are you ready, Mr. Vander? Then on with the Abbott and Costello Show. I'm back. Take those bicycle clips off your trousers. Did you ride your bicycle to the studio again today? Yes. It's very dangerous. Oh, it ain't as dangerous as being a pedestrian. It's getting so bad that even us Boy Scouts can't help old ladies across the street anymore. But we figured out a system. What do you do? We round up all the old ladies on one corner, and then we send for Tom Brenneman. Uh... <laughs> now, Costello, don't make fun of Tom Brenneman. <laughs> He's got quite an influence on the lady. You're telling me? My Aunt May has gotten to so many of his broadcasts, she won't let my Uncle Mike sit down at the breakfast table unless he's wearing a woman's hat. <laughs> Mike still plays the washed up with Spike Jones's band. It's a sad case, Abbott. No. Spike Jones had to get rid of him. Why? Success went to his head. He sold his washed up and bought a Bendix. I... <laughs> what is your Uncle Mike doing now? Well, he drives in the midget auto races. Is uh, Mike a fast driver? Abbott, I drove down the highway with him Sunday. And we were going so fast, the Burma shave signs were lathering up Dr. Pepper. <laughs> your, Uncle Mike, your Uncle Mike is wackier than you are. I can't understand how your Aunt May married him. Abbott, the day they got married, Uncle Mike was drugged. Your Aunt May drugged him? Yes, yeah, she drugged him all the way to the church. <laughs> and then drugged him right up to the altar. It was a beautiful wedding. They had a double ring ceremony. A double ring ceremony? Yeah, my Uncle Mike slipped the ring on her finger, and my Aunt May slipped one through his nose. <laughs> right after the wedding, Uncle Mike put his foot down. He said, May, the one that wears the pants in this family will handle the money. Well, how did it work out? You know, my Aunt May looks mighty nice and slack. No. 
Your Uncle Mike and Aunt May are quite a couple. Uh, have they got any children, Lou? Oh, sure. Last year they had triplets. Triplets? Boys or girls? Well, Boys one was a boy and one was a girl, but they never found out what the third one was. When it was three days old, it flew away. I... <laughs> So long, Abbott. I'm going over to the hospital to visit my Uncle Mike. Mike? Mike in, is in the hospital? Mm -hmm. Why, only last night I saw him at Zero's with a blonde. So did my Aunt May. I... <laughs> Brother, did she hit him? I don't blame her. She hit him with provocation. Yes. She hit him with... What was that? <laughs> she hit him with provocation. She did not. She hit him with a chair. No, no. no. <laughs> I'm talking about provocation. Provocation made her hit him with a chair. Provocation may have made her hit him with a chair, but biting his ear off was her own idea. <laughs> why do they always fight? Why, why can't they be like me and my wife? When we feel an argument coming on, I go out in the yard and cool off. Yes, and you haven't been in the house in 20 years. <laughs> well, that's now I true. found out how you get that can. Never mind that. That's not true, Costello. My wife and I are very happy. Ours is a real smash-up romance. Yes. You're a wreck, and she's built like a tow truck. Now, that... <laughs> How dare you ridicule married? Uh, you. You don't even know what a husband is. A husband is what's left of a sweetheart after a nerve has been killed. <laughs> you, know, you know what's the matter with you? You're afraid to get married. I am not. All right. What would you do if a beautiful blonde came along and proposed to you? I'd get a marriage license and marry her. Suppose a beautiful redhead came along and proposed to you. I'd get a marriage license and marry her. And if a beautiful brunette came along, I'd get a marriage license and marry her. Wait a minute. Where are you getting all those marriage licenses? The same place you're getting all the girls. I... <laughs> Dummy, you never tried to get married. I did, too. I once spoke to the Lonely Heart Club. I said I wanted to marry somebody with hair like mine, and I enclosed the lock of my hair. And what happened? I got letters from two Cocker Spaniels. <laughs> oh, Stan, please. Look. How is your romance coming with Susan Miller? I think she wants to see me in a bathing suit. What makes you think that? Every time I ask her to go out with me, she tells me to go jump in a lake. <laughs> Hello, boy. Well, it's Susan, Susan Miller. Ah, <laughs> oh, go ahead, Costello. Ask her for a date. Susan, if you'll go out with me tonight, I'll make love to you like Napoleon made love to Cleopatra. Costello. <laughs> Cleopatra and Napoleon lived a thousand years apart. What's the difference as long as they loved each other? <laughs> After all, Susan, you're making a mistake by not going out with me. Remember, Christmas is coming. Oh, Costello. Darling, I hadn't thought of that. Now you've got it. Susan, i got an idea. How would you like a diamond ring, a diamond necklace, and a mink coat? You've got all those things for me? No, but I've got the idea. <laughs> Costello, that's no way to talk to Susan. You're nothing but a fat, slippery... Thought off little ignoramus. Who's little? I'm just as big an ignoramus as you are. <laughs> no one that Susan won't go out with you. You never offer to do anything for her. Susan, if you will let me take you home tonight, I'll help you solve all your problems. But I haven't got any problems. And I haven't taken you home yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, goodbye. I don't blame Susan Miller for turning you down every night in the week. You're out with a different girl. You're wrong, Abbott. I only go out with six girls. Six girls? I take Sunday off. Monday I go with Mabel. Tuesday I go with Rose. Wednesday I go with Amy. Thursday I go with Ruth. Friday I go with Betty. And Saturday I go with Clara. And Sundays I take off. Hello, Mr. Costello. There goes my Sunday off. <laughs> Costello, if you put your money in the bank, you wouldn't be able to go out with girls. Now, I'm taking you to the bank right now, and you're going to open the savings account with that $10. Put your money in the bank. In the bank, in the bank, put your money in the bank, and draw interest. Now, let's go in. Abbott, this bank ain't honest. Look at that sign. That's that $4 million. Well, how does that make, that make them dishonest, Lou? My mother put $7 in that bank yesterday. Why didn't they change that sign? <laughs> that's how this is a fine bank. See that man coming this way? He's the president. That dopey-looking guy is the president? Certainly. What happened to Truman? <laughs> Them Republicans have probably got him standing in for Eddie Tucson. Oh, <laughs> quiet, Costello. Here he is. Well, well, Mr. Abbott, say, who dragged this oversized piggy bank in here? Oh, pardon me, that's Costello. Uh, Costello wants to put some money in the bank. Fine, fine. Now, where would you like to put it, Costello? Checking account, savings account, or the vault? Did I have that last thing again? Vault? Vault. 
surely you know about our ball. Well, I don't vault very well, but if you want to dance, let's Jimmy. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Melonhead. Costello wants to open a savings account. Fine. In that case, we'll have to fill out a new depositor's card. Here we are. Now, first, your name. Lou Costello. How do you spell Costello? Let us see now. C-O-S. C-O-S. C. C-O. Just put down Jones. <laughs> All right. Now, how do you spell Jones? Let Jones worry about that. My name is Costello. Now, look, look, we'll have to have your name. It's the rules of the bank. Now, in case something goes wrong, the money goes to your next of kin. Now, tell me your name so I can tell your mother. My mother knows my name. <laughs> All right. How much money have you got to deposit? I got ten one dollar bills. Okay, hand it over here and I'll count it. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's only eight dollars here. Eight? Hey, wait a minute. There must be some mistake here. I'll count it. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's only six. Six? Hand it back here, Rabbit. I'll count it again. One, two, three, four. There's only four dollars here. Wait a minute. Let me count it. It won't last another trip. <laughs> Look, I want to deposit ten dollars. Now, I only got four. That's all right. You can put up security for the other six dollars. Now, about security, do you have a car or jewelry? Or does anyone in your house have a fur coat? Only my ear, Dale, but I don't think he's your size. <laughs> well, in that case, I'll accept the four dollars. Congratulations. You are now one of our depositors. Now, when you walk into the bank, Costello, you can put up a big front. How do I do that? In your case, walk in backwards. <laughs> Costello, you're now on the road to success. Remember, to become rich, you must save your money. You've got to be thrifty. Thrifty? You've got to be economical. Economical? Parsimonious. Parsimonious? You don't know the meaning of failure. I don't know the meaning of parsimonious. <laughs> Give me my money, Melon. But you came in here as one of our depositors, Costello. If you take your money back, you'll go out of here as one of our withdrawers. I'll go out like what? With drawers, with drawers. I hope so. I came in here with them. Miss Arquette Castello, don't withdraw your money. Remember, you're putting it in the bank so you won't spend it on girls. Oh, girls. Don't, Castello. You squander your money on girls, do you? How long has this been going on? When did you start going with girls? As soon as I found out that I wasn't one. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense, Costello. Your money stays here, and Bank of Melonhead is going to handle your financial affairs. I certainly will handle your financial affairs. Costello, here's how I'll do it. First, I will calculate your fiscal remuneration. Next, I will deflate your budget by taking a terrific slice out of your monetary millennium. After that, I'll compound your defensors, clip your coupons, and then I will stretch your capitalized assets until your amortization covers your inflated fiduciary encumbrances. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> Abbott and Costello will be back with more of their antics in just a moment. But first, listen to this. If every Christmas sticker user knew what PDQ Christmas gift stickers users know, they'd all drive in at the neighborhood PDQ station and pick up a free gift assortment of Christmas package stickers. So why don't you? Gay, uninhibited, even hilarious stickers in the traditional PDQ manner. Gum, ready to lick and stick on the Christmas packages you wrap. Now, you can't buy stickers like these. None like them have ever been printed before. Happy, pointed, sometimes two-edged little messages of cheer and wonderment that'll make wrapping packages for Christmas almost more fun than unwrapping them. Complete assortment, dozens of them, yours absolutely free. Just drive in to any neighborhood PDQ service station and ask for your set. Better do that soon, because they're going awfully fast, and darn it, we might just run out of them. Nothing to buy, of course. We just want to get you into that PDQ station once. We know from then on you'll be our customer for life. Here also absolutely free is the Abbott and Costello Show. Hey, here's Abbott. And now here is vivacious Susan Miller with the Les Baxter Singer. It's going to be something yeah. Susan is singing something new for me. There'll be some changes. There'll be some changes. There'll be some changes. 
Shepard. Now, Shepard, you remind me of a patient of mine, a traffic cop. Gives everybody tickets. Gives tickets for no reason at all. Well, wouldn't he be considered crazy? Not in California, he wouldn't. <laughs> and last night, he gave his wife a ticket at the dinner table just for parking the butter too near the ketchup. He was right. She was in a red zone. <laughs> you know, some screwy... Yes, indeedy. Some screwy cop gave me a ticket this morning just because I stuck something in the back of another guy's car. What was it? The front of my car. Ah, uh, <laughs> we're getting no place. Uh, professor. Uh, you can say that again. Yes, I'm, I'm saying it. Can you cure Costello of going out with girls? I think so. I'll give him something that'll make him too tired to go out with girls. Here, walk over to this drugstore and get this prescription filled. Mmm. Joe's Drugstore, Dayton, Ohio. Will, uh, will the medicine make you too tired to go out with girls? Oh, the medicine's no good, but that walk ought to knock you out. <laughs> Professor, Costello's trouble is that he hands these girls such a terrific line that they all fall for him. Well, in that case, I'll have to probe his mind. Now, Costello, lay down on that rubber life raft. I'm having my couch reupholstered. That's right. Now tell me, just what do you say to these girls? Well, every Monday night, I call on Pepsi Tinfoil. I go to her. <laughs> Good evening, Pepsi, my dear. Well, if it isn't my hero, Five Chief Costello, may I congratulate you on how natural and intellectual you look in your official uniform. <laughs> Fire, Chief. Costello, how could you lie like that? Chief, for your information, you haven't given me an introduction to your mutual friend. <laughs> it sounds like she's been gargling with such cleanser. <laughs> Hesse, my love, may I present Fireman Abbott of the Hook and Ladder Division? And if he don't stop Hook and Ladders, I'm going to fire him out of the division? <laughs> You're so dutiful and so beautiful. Oh, Tessie, it's all in the game. Just yesterday I was sitting in the firehouse and an alarm came in from a movie theater. Yes? It was three minutes to six. I jumped in my car, flew across town, 90 miles an hour to get to that movie theater. Why'd you go so fast? I wanted to get there before the prices changed. <laughs> oh, so you must be a sensational driver. Oh, I don't like to brag, but Saturday I was sitting on the top of the hook and ladder steering. The driver was pulling me along at 90 miles an hour. Suddenly at Hollywood and Viney made a right turn, and I made a left turn. What happened? It was the first time that pedestrians were knocked off all four corners at the same time. <laughs> I'm glad I met you. <laughs> well, I consider myself very fortunate to have met up with you. <laughs> uh, well, you see, Professor, that's what happened with Tessie Tinfoil. It's very interesting. And now, Chief uh, Costello, what other girls have you fooled? Well, on Tuesday night, I go to see Honey Child Lee. She's a lovely little girl, and she... <laughs> Honey style, you all. Well, pone my cone, pone and jolting in my shouting and bread if it ain't Colonel Costello. <laughs> Colonel Costello? This is terrible. Colonel, who else your charm and friend? Honey child, this is my Effie Boone companion, <laughs> Major Abbott. As soon as he can say the five more mint juleps, he all will be a full colonel. Oh, Father, you little old father, man. Y'all are pulling my little old leg. No, I ain't, but that's a fine little old idea, and I'm a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Colonel, what is there? Anything new happening down south? Oh, yes, quite a scandal down in Birmingham. Somebody stole a bronze suit off the statue of Stonewall Jackson. Left him standing there in his DVDs. Oh, that terrible. It's a disgrace to the south, a southern general standing there in a union suit. <laughs> Professor, he hands out a different line to each girl. Very interesting. 
Uh, now, Colonel, I mean Costello, what other girls have you been courting? Tell them about Cleo Smith. Well, Cleo thinks I'm a big used car dealer. Kurt the Jerk. <laughs> Kurt the Jerk? Yeah, he's the guy that sells the cars to Madman Munch. Uh, by the way, Costello, I see you have a picture of Lassie on the back of your watch. Don't tell me you've been going out with Lassie. That's the saddest case of all. She thinks I'm rinsed him skin. <laughs> and now, Costello, in order to cure you, I must know everything. Are there any more girls you haven't told me about? No, sir. Are you sure? Professor, would I lie? Professor, can you do anything for Costello? I'll start the treatment tomorrow. Goodbye, and give your name to my secretary on the way up. There's the uh, professor's secretary. My, she's pretty. Miss, I'm the new patient, and, um... Well, Governor Costello, how are things in Idaho? I've been mighty, mighty busy. All right, come on, Costello. The boys will be back in just a few seconds, folks, but first we want you to hear this. Sometimes I wish every motorist was a graduate petroleum engineer. Then we could get right down to cases and tell you just how and where and why PDQ gasoline is different, and my selling job would be all done. Incidentally, any of you who know the technical side and who have available the monthly reports on motor fuels, take a look at the current report. We're pretty proud of how PDQ stacks up. For the rest of us who wouldn't know gasoline specifications from sour grape juice, let me say that PDQ is clean. PDQ is balanced, just right for famous PDQ performance without burning up your motor. PDQ is rich, made that way to deliver PDQ's traditional two to six more miles. The way for you to get these extra advantages is pretty simple. You just drive into the neighborhood PDQ service station and fill up with our gas. Do that, will you? And then I can quit worrying about you and start working on somebody else. Thanks, boys, for being quiet. Now you can go on with the Abbott and Costello show. Boo, bop, bop, boo, bay, boo, bop, bop, boo, bay, boo, bop, bop. And now here are Abbott and Costello with a final word. Well, Lou, now would be a good time to tell our listeners about our new Saturday morning kid show. Folks, every Saturday morning on this network, Abbott and I are doing a special show for kids, featuring the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation Award. Hundreds of dollars in cash and valuable prizes will be given to the boy or girl of the week. Listen Saturday morning for our next broadcast with our special kid guest star, Luanna Patton, star of Walt Disney Pictures. Good night, everybody. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, everybody in Patterson. Good night. Hollywood by Charles Vanda and featuring Susan Miller and the Left Baxter Singers. This is Michael Roy saying goodbye until this same time next Wednesday. Stay tuned now for the Jack Parr Show, which follows immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a special announcement. Christmas seals are on their way. Those colorful stamps that finance the fight against tuberculosis. Watch for your Christmas seals in the mail and use them generously. Stay tuned now for Jack...